We're on this journey together, powered by our partnerships, united in our mission to defend the planet and defeat poverty. We're moving the world one action at a time. Please welcome Billy Porter. Thank you so much. For centuries, music has inspired the passion for change. And in times of crisis, music has brought us all together. Well, right now we are facing multiple crises coming at us from all fronts, living through extremely challenging times. But we cannot give up fighting. We cannot give up the fight. Will you stand with me? I know some other people who will as well. In London, my friend Niall Rogers, and right here in Central Park, the amazing John Baptiste. John, <laughs> what are we gonna do now? Well, my friend Niall in London has put together an incredible medley of two songs that truly define what we're here to do today. So now it's time to kick off the next six hours of this 24-hour Global Citizen Live Festival. Y'all ready? With the words and music of the legendary Bob Marley, here are our Global Citizen All-Stars. Let's throw it back to London, Niall, if you would please. Yeah. 
As you just saw, the world is uniting today because you all realize that we've reached a tipping point. And if we're going to do something about it, if we as global citizens are going to defend the planet and defeat poverty, it requires something radical. For 10 years, Global Citizen has been in this park on this stage with this microphone and the world watching. We've achieved big things, but there is still so much, so much more to do. That's right, you have heard that our climate crisis is spiraling out of control, that kids need an education to break free of poverty, that everyone on the planet, no matter their gender or race, deserves the same opportunities. You have heard from activists on the front lines who are fighting for those left behind by broken systems. And frankly, I know we can do better. Yeah? Yeah, we can do better, right? How do I know? Well, I've been around for a long time. I've seen some things. As a black queer man, I've witnessed moments. Oh, I didn't know that was going Yes, as a black queer man, I've witnessed moments that have turned into movements. I've been in the fight since the day I was born and I will be fighting until the day I die. That same power is in your hands, within all of you, on all seven continents, united with the legends of music, world leaders, activists, and champions for change. Our night here in Central Park is part of a 24-hour global effort to remind the leaders who can make a difference that we need change for our planet and to end the cycle of poverty forever. Yeah, we are going to recommit ourselves to each other, the planet, and all of it in service to the next generation. So many of you that are out here tonight, we do not have time to waste. We need to act, and we need to act now. Here's why. No matter who you are, where you're from, or what you look like, you are a citizen of the world. And as a global citizen, you know the challenges we all face. Climate crisis, inequality, poverty, injustice. It's time for our generation to realize it's just us. Just us. In the villages and cities and suburbs, just us. Advocating on social media and protesting in the streets, just us. Who will inherit the future problems created by the past if we don't seize upon this unique moment? We have the unprecedented power to unite as one and move the world to start a movement. Activism requires action. Be the ripple that starts the wave. We have to take action if we want to see change. 
They ask, why now? I ask, why not? We don't have time to debate over time. This is our moment to demand action, to challenge the leaders of the world, to create a better future. What we do today determines our tomorrow. Why now? Because the power is in your hands. We are together in this fight. Never has the opportunity to do great things for the global community been greater either. Is that me? Uh, and because of the efforts of many individual activists and partner organizations, we are seeing commitments in response to the climate emergency while also making sure we get back on track to ending extreme poverty by 2030. We're going to go to see some of these commitments here in New York tonight, and they're happening on our stages all around the world. And we need you and the millions watching around the world at home to commit to use your voice and use it loud. That's right. In Washington, D.C., Congress is considering the most ambitious climate legislation ever to cut emissions 50% by 2030. Yeah, and in a month, world leaders will meet in Italy for the G20 summit. We need them to take action to end the pandemic increase movement on climate change, and address the neglected hunger crisis. Okay. So we have some work to do. Y'all ready to do some work? Yeah. I love it. So I guess it's time to go back to the concert, right? Let's get a little music up in this park. Y'all ready? So I had the privilege to work beside this icon and witness her genius firsthand. I've always admired her as an artist, the way she embraces who she is while expressing herself and her passion for the cause through her music. When she first recorded this first track in 1985, she rewrote the lyrics, transforming it into a feminist anthem seeped in empowerment. Central Park, Global Citizen Live, please, Give it up for Miss Cindy Lauper! Global, oh no. Global Citizens' vision is to end extreme poverty by 2030. I believe that includes not just monetary poverty, but poverty of the spirit. When I first recorded this song in 1983, I sang it to remind all women and girls that we deserve a joyful life and we deserve to have true equality. And it's sad to think that almost 40 years later, it's still not true. So because of the way things are going in this world right now. I dedicate this song to the women and girls of Afghanistan who deserve the ability to make their own choices, to have hope, and to have a joyful life. We see you, and we will continue to do all we can to shine a light on what you're going through. So don't give up. This one we sing also to the angels. Hit it.
Do you want to have fun? Oh, yeah. Come on, say it loud enough so everyone in the world can hear. The jump water. Okay, how you doing? You all right? Okay. If it's you guys over here, rattle your jewelry, but don't forget, donate, donate. Okay, it's my honor now. We have our, our little crew here, but John, where's John? There he is, John Baptiste, come. Come play with us. <laughs> All right, are you talking about me? Am I a sweaty mess? I always get in trouble for sweat, don't worry about it. This song, uh, this is a healing song. Always felt it was. Two, three, four.
When I last saw you laugh If this world makes you crazy And you're taking all you can bear You call me up Because you know I'll be there And I see your truth Sing with me. Like oh, come on. <laughs> like a Many blessings. Thank you. Please welcome President for the 26th UN Framework Convention on Climate Change Conference, Alok Sharma. Friends, my fellow global citizens, in 37 days from now, the United Kingdom will host the critical United Nations Climate Conference, COP26. And world leaders will come together and we need them to make bold commitments and take action to limit global warming. As a world, we're already on average 1.2 degrees warmer than before the Industrial Revolution in the 19th century. Now, 1.2 degrees doesn't sound like much, but in each of our countries, we are seeing the horrendous effects of global warming, of climate change. And quite rightly, future generations will hold us responsible if we do not act. So join me and with one loud and united global voice, call on the biggest greenhouse gas emitters, the G20 group of nations, to make much bolder commitments to cut emissions. Call on the richest countries to make good on their promise of money to support developing countries deal with the impacts of climate change. 
and call on world leaders to deliver an outcome at Glasgow we can all be proud of. We are all global citizens and our fates are intertwined. Together, with energy, commitment and political will, we can make COP26 the moment we change course. We must protect our precious planet. The window is closing fast. But I have hope, and you have hope, we still have time to write our future. A future with clean air and nature restored, where the world is protected from the worst effects of climate change, and where we can create jobs and prosperity without harming our planet. My fellow global citizens, tell your governments, tell your leaders to pick the planet to protect this brilliant jewel we all call our home. Thank you, New York, for hosting me. Please welcome Padma Lakshmi and Tan France. Hello. Hello, New York. How are you guys doing? Enjoying the heat? Nice, right? Padma, you've got something important to say, is that right? I do, I do. The pandemic, as we know, is estimated to drive an additional 150 million people into extreme poverty and ex through ex an acceleration of key factors like health, inequ inequity, and hunger. And it is our generation's absolute duty to demand that the leaders we all elected, who have the power to do so, make this their priority. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can make some noise, make some noise. <laughs> yeah. That's what today is about, let them hear you. I want you all to look at what's happening. New records all over the, for the wrong reasons. Extreme floods, extreme storms and droughts. And guess what happens when fields are swamped or turned to dust? It's simple, we cannot grow food take our climate crisis, put it on top of a global pandemic that has dis disrupted our basic food distribution systems, and then you have a humanitarian crisis like we do right now. 41 million people are on the brink of starvation. This is seen in the faces of the people in Haiti, the women and children of Afghanistan, and millions more across the Horn of Africa and in Latin America. Listen up. We can feed them all. Mm -hmm. So let's talk brass tax. To provide all of these people with a meal for one year is just $6 billion. Yes, I know that sounds like a lot, but it's less than most of those billionaires are spending to blast off into space. So today, yeah, so today we are calling for businesses, foundations, and more importantly, most importantly, governments to provide enough meals to feed those in desperate, desperate need. I am joining you today from the National Mall here in Washington, D.C. Behind me stand a sea of white flags, more than 600,000 in total, each representing someone who died from COVID-19 here in the United States. Globally, the COVID-19 pandemic has now claimed over four and a half million lives. And this is just the reported number. We know the true number is likely far higher. But what these flags and this devastating loss of life globally cannot speak to are the many indirect effects of this pandemic across our planet. That is why today, as President Biden and other world leaders race to vaccinate the world, I am also proud to announce that the United States will contribute more than $295 million to countries around the world to stave off famine and extreme hunger, confront gender-based violence, and address the urgent humanitarian needs the COVID-19 pandemic is leaving in its wake. Together, we can defend the planet, defeat poverty, and end this pandemic while warding off its worst effects. Thank you so much.
please welcome New York Governor Kathy Hochul. Hello, New York and citizens all over the globe. Well, as Cindy Lauper says, we all just want to have some fun, right? All right, that's what we do, because I want to say a couple things here, and this is going to be the shortest speech you ever heard from a politician. So listen up, my friends. First of all, we are going to defend our planet, and New York State will be not just nation-leading, but global-leading, and you'll be so proud of that, with what we're going to do. We're fighting back. We're fighting mankind's assault on Mother Earth. It has to stop. It has to stop right now. We're also going to fight poverty and make sure that every little kid knows that we love them and they don't have to go to bed with hunger in their bellies anymore because we love them. And lastly, we are going to defeat COVID once and for all because you're all getting vaccinated, right, everybody? Yes, indeed, you are. God bless you. I love you guys. Let's have some fun. And thank you, Global Citizen, for making New York your home. Take care, everybody. Please welcome Alessia Cara. She just wants to be beautiful. She goes unnoticed. She knows no limit. She craves attention. She praises an image. She prays to be sculpted by the sculptor. Oh, she don't see. The light that's shining Deeper than the eyes can find it Maybe we have made her blind So she tries to cover up the pain And cut her woes away Cause cover girls don't cry After their face is made But there's a hope that's waiting for you in the dark You should know you're beautiful
so, so much for having me. My name's Alessia Cara. One time for Stay Human. All right, this is my first festival back, which is crazy. It's so amazing to be here in front of all these people. This is wild. I'm so, so happy to be here. Um, I actually put out an album yesterday, which is super cool. It's called In the Meantime, and uh, I want to play you a song from that album, if that's okay. This is a new one. Um, and I thought it would be appropriate to play because this song um, is one that I wrote when I was not going through the best time. And I was really questioning if any of my days were gonna get better. I was looking back at my life and realizing that I'd missed so many good days because I was just sad and kind of taking everything for granted. And I think after the year we all had, we're going into this new phase of life with a totally new perspective and hopefully cherishing and enjoying the moments where we all get to be like this together and looking forward to better days. I definitely am. I'm so honored to be here. So, with that being said, this one's a little sad, but hopefully I can be, you know, living proof that things do get better. So I'm so happy today. I hope you guys are happy today. Even though we're sweaty, it's hot, it's sunny, but we're all here together. So, that being said, this is called Best Days. Thank you so much. 
All right. All right, who's ready to jump now? I know it's hot, but we're gonna make this count because it's our last song. Here we go. to get as low as you possibly can. Come on, get low, get low. Even if your pants are tight. Here we go. Yeah. One, two, three.
welcome actress and human rights activist, Nomzano Mbata. What's up, Central Park? How you doing today? It feels so good to be together again. But consider this for a moment. In Africa, a continent of 1.3 billion people, still only 4% are fully vaccinated against COVID-19. The pandemic has pushed an additional 150 million people into extreme poverty due to emphasis of key factors like inequity, hunger, and health. Much of the world remains desperate for the opportunity of access to a vaccine. But all of the world is affected by this inequity. Without vaccines and other life-saving tools, Africa and the rest of the world will continue to be set back in the cause of defeating poverty. We simply cannot let that happen. Joining me in this fight are two tireless champions for vaccine equity. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Prince Harry and Meghan, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. <laughs> Thank you, Nomzamo. Hello and good evening, global citizens. Look at all of us here, 60,000 strong, together in New York City. Are we prepared to do what's necessary to end this pandemic? Hi, everybody. It is so good to be back here with all of you. Look, we know, <laughs> we know that it feels like this pandemic has been going on forever. We get it, it is a lot. And some people are just over it. But if everyone's over it, it's never going to be over. There is so much that we can do today, now, that can get us closer to ending this pandemic. And that's why we're all here. We're able to be here tonight because the most brilliant scientists, researchers, frontline workers, and selfless public health leaders have risked their lives to protect our global community. They are our humanitarian heroes. Since this pandemic began, We've been talking to the experts about how we can do our part. This week, we sat with independent growth health leaders to further understand how we get closer to vaccine equity and ending this health crisis. But we're battling more than the virus alone. This is a battle of misinformation, bureaucracy, lack of transparency, and lack of access. And above all, this is a human rights crisis. Every single person on this planet has a fundamental right to get this vaccine. That's the point, but that's not happening. And while in this country and many others, you can go almost anywhere and get vaccinated, billions of people around the world cannot. This year, the world's expected to produce enough doses to meet the target of vaccinating 70% of people in every single country, but it is wrong that so much of the vaccine supply has only gone to just 10 wealthy nations so far and not everyone else. It's just not okay. Guys, we have what we need to vaccinate the world, but the experts told us here's what's getting in the way. They said many countries are ready to produce vaccines at home, yet they aren't allowed to because ultra-wealthy pharmaceutical companies are not sharing the recipes to make them. These countries... <laughs> these countries have the means, the ability, and the workers to start manufacturing. 
All they are waiting for is the vaccine intellectual property to be waived and for the vaccine technology to be transferred over. And, and by the way, many of these vaccines were publicly funded. They are your vaccines. You paid for them. And when we view this as a humanitarian crisis, which it is, control over a vaccine that can help save lives should not be solely in the hands of the fortunate few. The experts also told us that doses are being bought up and stockpiled by wealthy nations and sent later to developing countries, often when they're close to expiration and when it's already too late. Dose sharing commitments are so important and appreciated. But this cannot just be a charity operation. It's a fundamental human rights issue. And finally, in our conversations, these experts shared that how the vaccine is distributed and who it's distributed to should be left to independent international organizations who know exactly where the doses are most needed. Just think about the millions of vaccines that have been discarded this year. That's like throwing away life vests when those around you are drowning. So where does that leave us? My wife and I believe... <laughs> My wife and I believe that where you're born should not dictate your ability to survive. Especially when the treatments exist to keep you safe. So, global citizens, we ask you tonight, do you think we should start treating the access, access to the vaccine as basic human right? I don't think they heard you. Thank you. When we start making decisions through that lens, where every single person deserves equal access to the vaccine, then we can achieve what is needed together for all of us. Now we are very excited to introduce a champion for global peace and equity, a leader and a new friend who we had the pleasure of meeting with earlier this week, U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, Linda Thomas-Greenfield. Hello. Thank you. As the Duke and Duchess said, we need to stop the spread and get vaccines to everyone. That is why President Biden announced this week that we're donating another 500 million vaccine doses to the world. That brings our total donations to 1.1 billion doses. The world has learned the hard way that global health isn't only about viruses and diseases. It touches every aspect of life itself. Economies have collapsed. Gender-based violence has spiked. Millions of children have lost valuable education time. And many, particularly girls, may never return to school. These effects and more are felt most acutely by the world's refugees, people who have fled war famine, and persecution in search of safety, dignity, a better life. At the Tokyo Olympics, I met a team of Olympians composed entirely of refugees. And one Afghan woman's family fled Jalalabad when she was six months old. This summer, she competed in judo at the Olympic Games. <clears throat> and and she told me the first thing her judo teacher taught her was how to fall down. The second was how to get back up. So many of the world's refugees have been knocked down. 
They have lost relatives and loved ones. They've had to leave their homes behind. But with a little help, just a little help, they can get back up. And they amaze you because refugees are extraordinary. They're teachers. They're lighting up children's minds. They're parents raising the next generation. They're doctors and nurses saving our lives during a pandemic. They're cooks, they're musicians, they're poets feeding our stomachs and our souls. They are human beings who have been knocked down and need some help getting back up. And we need them. We need their genius, we need their talents, we need their love, and we need their humanity. We need to help them get back up. And together, let's make 2022 the year we end this pandemic and did more to help the world's refugees than ever before. Thank you very much. <laughs> Wonderful. So, yeah. Please welcome back Global Citizen Ambassador Rachel Brosnahan. And welcome to the stage, the Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of Verizon, Hans Vestberg. Uh, that is um, not a trio we were prepared to follow. <laughs> uh, thank you, Rachel. <laughs> At Verizon, we know that to defeat poverty, we need to make sure everyone has access to quality education. And we are taking actions to close the digital divide so no student is left behind. Today, I'm proud to share that we pledged more than $3 billion to help those need it most and close the digital divide by 2025. Woo! Through this commitment, which is part of a five-year responsible business plan, we're scaling the resources to our education work to over three million teachers with the Verizon Innovative Learning, which is a free online portal bringing next generation learning tools to all K-12 educators nationwide. I'm honored to be standing with a strong advocate for education, Rachel Brosnahan, who will tell you how you can get involved. Rachel. Thank you, Hans. So as many of you already know, COVID-19 exposed the depth of the digital divide. Imagine trying to participate in remote learning without basic tools like access to the internet or a computer. We know how important education is in defeating poverty and Verizon's goal to provide 10 million young people with digital skills training by 2030 is a massive step in the right direction. But we all have to do our part if we are going to make an impact. So I am asking all of you to get involved. Go on to Snapchat tonight. I see so many of you with your phones. Use Verizon's custom lens to share this message with your networks, big and small. Use your platforms to keep driving visibility and action on this issue. I know I will be. Let's do it together. Let's do it together. OK. Global citizens, are you ready for some more music? OK. Well, in that case, please welcome back John Batiste. Where y'all at, New York City? Just need 
Put down that pork chop and salt. Then we fell in love on the boulevard. If you was Jenny, I guess I was far. Uh, I ain't wrong for you. Play along. Singing this song till you die. Just need you. I just need you. I need you. I need you. Need you. Need. I just need you. Sing your song, Desi.
New York. We only got one life and one planet. So let's have a good damn time. Yes, sir. living the way that God calls you to live, living the way that you were made to be, a divine, light-bearing, change-maker, truth-teller. You are enough just as you are. This is more than a concert for me. Yeah. This is a spiritual practice. All of us are gathered together around the world right now in this moment, and we have a choice as to what we want to do with our time on earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what we decide today is going to reverberate for generations to come. This moment 
is a very special moment because that's the moment where we can make a decision who we want to be. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And who you are, just as you are, is enough. Come on. Embrace love. Embrace truth. I love you so much. Even if I don't know you, I love you. Welcome again, actress and human rights activist, Nomzamo Mbata. <laughs> Tonight, we are focused on defeating poverty. However, we have to remember that so many basics that we take for granted are not even an option for millions, and it keeps our brothers and sisters around the world trapped in an endless cycle. I'm proud to stand with City tonight as part of their global fight to drive social impact with the urgency low-income communities need. 
from funding solutions to light up homes safely with solar power across the African continent to microfinance loans for women entrepreneurs in India and across Latin America, City works to foster economic development and create employment and education opportunities. Some brilliant news. Tonight, City is unlocking a multi-billion dollar investment to expand access to essential services for 15 million low-income households across the globe, with a specific focus on improving the livelihoods of 10 million women in just the next four years. Now, I know that you are all with me in demanding change for our planet as we unite the world in 24 hours over music and action. But we need global partners like City who can carry this message forward. Together, we can move the world. We have no more time to waste. Thank you. Please welcome artist and activist Amber Ruffin. Have you ever been so hungry that you felt like you were starving? Well, for most of you here, I'm pretty sure you were not. Most of us here today have no idea what starvation actually feels like. But the devastating truth is that over 41 million people in the world really are starving. And like most bad things in this world, food insecurity disproportionately affects women and children. Women's lack of access to basic rights doesn't just happen in Texas. It is not a new thing, a hot topic for the news cycle. It happens everywhere, and it has been happening for hundreds of years. We have to change this. We cannot just sit back and accept that women and children are going hungry because of patriarchy. We need to demand that world leaders create actual change and not just lip service. We need all right, amen. We need global commitments to equal pay, empowerment through education, and other equitable solutions so we can turn it around for ourselves. Now, we can do this. Just download the Global Citizen app and start taking action to demand equity, defend the planet, and end this hunger crisis now. We are the Global Solidarity Fund, a community of executives, activists, women and men religious, and philanthropists. We're working with the most vulnerable to create life-changing opportunities. When any of us are in need, all of us are in need. I am Sister Pat. Together with the Global Solidarity Fund, I invite you to join business, development, and faith organizations as an ally in solidarity. Please welcome co-chair of the Leaders' Council at the Global Solidarity Fund, Matt Higgins. I am so honored to be here representing the Global Solidarity Fund, our founders, business, and philanthropic partners, and more than a million women and men religious around the world, just like Sister Pat and Father Leonor. Now, I'm a lifelong New Yorker. Any New Yorkers in the house? All right. Now, you see those buildings over there in Central Park right behind you? I did not grow up there. I grew up in a place called Queens, New York. Okay. Now, like a lot of people in New York, I grew up really poor and relying upon public services. There were a lot of times when I didn't know where my next meal was coming from, and I'm grateful for all the support I had. Yet I remember in my most desperate times when my stomach was empty, it was so often met with a full heart and a box full of food from my local Catholic food pantry. That's why I'm here tonight. And why all of you are here tonight is to pay it forward. I have some big news, all right? We are New Yorkers. We don't just talk, we act. Are you ready for it? In order to help over a million migrants and refugees around the world, particularly young girls and women, tonight, anonymous donors are donating $28 million. That money will go towards food, vaccines, job training throughout 2022, and it's just a down payment. We are also announcing a campaign to raise $100 million for this cause. Thank you so much for bringing your love tonight to Central Park. Please stand in solidarity with us.
stand for abundance and dignity and joy for myself and all others. That means everyone should have access to local, fresh food. It's an injustice that they don't. And so our mission here at the farm is to change systems and bring food security to under-resourced community members, our neighbors. Our collective well-being demands it, and it requires all of us to step in and engage. Please welcome activist and executive director of Mwanzo Mbaya, Eunice Akoth. We are in a moment where we are faced with so many enormous issues that seem impossible to overcome. But I know that together we can be an unstoppable force for change. I know because of my own personal journey. Growing up in Kibera, the largest urban slum in Africa, I watched my mom and dad rise before dawn every day to earn less than a dollar a day. It was nearly impossible to feed a whole family on those wages. And there were many nights when my mother would divide the food between me and my siblings and boil hot water for herself because there was no food left. She sacrificed so that we could get our education and make a better life for ourselves. She saw beyond her present and the seemingly impossible obstacles in her life and envisioned a future where her children had opportunities that she did not have. The future became my reality. I made it out of those in circumstances and I now and I know that I'm here for a reason. To see, to learn, to educate, to represent the youth from my village and youth living in a cycle of poverty all over the world. I stand here on their behalf to say that poverty doesn't define who we are. We just need people to believe in us, to follow this calling. I founded Mwanza Umpia, an organization that strives to give back and uplift the stories of youth in Kibera. I'm so proud that this has become my part of my narrative and helps me live the life my mother envisioned for me and so many other mothers wish for their children. Right now, Women and girls make up 60% of the world's population and who are suffering from food insecurity. Women just like my mother and girls just like me, together we can change this reality. To all of you here in Central Park and those of you watching all around the globe who want to do something but don't know how, I urge you, don't wait for someone else. Be the change you wish to see. Seek uncomfortable conversations, lend a helping hand to those in need. If we at Mwanza Mpia can make a difference, so can you. The power is in your hands. Thank you. Music. Music is the universal language. Music is love and kindness, music is passion and truth. Music is what fuels justice and change. And for the next 24 hours, it's beats, lyrics, melodies, and foot stomping, heart pumping sounds are going to change this world again. Global citizens, these are the times that demand that we be great, big, and bold for those who can't, that we be optimistic dreamers for those struggling to get through the day, that we be leaders, the leaders that we've been waiting for. And right now, music is doing what it does best. It's uniting us all around the world. We're in Rio, we're in Mumbai, we're in London, and we're right here in New York. Yes, so good to see all of your beautiful faces. So listen here, I just had the pleasure of working with this next talented, fierce female as her fairy godmother. And I got to witness the special magic she brings into this world. Central Park, give it up for Camilla Cabello!
you know what? Before I go to the next song, I was just thinking, I saw something that Miley Cyrus said playing a festival the other day, and she was like, you guys haven't experienced live music in a while. We artists and performers haven't really played live music in a while either. And without amazing audiences like you guys today, this shit would be really scary. So thank you guys so much for being an awesome audience. And uh, you know what? I'm gonna, try, I'm gonna try to introduce this next person in a formal way, but that's kind of weird because we kind of know each other pretty well, and I think you guys know we know each other pretty well. So give it up for Sean Mendez. scream. That was kind of scary. She said. Um, next up, I want to bring up a beautiful new friend of mine. They are a beautiful person, a beautiful soul, 
and a beautiful poet. Everybody give it up for Alok. talking a lot about this. This has been a really crazy couple years. I mean, it, it's hard enough to just be a human, but the past couple years have been really crazy and really, really hard. And something that helps me, I think, in general, uh, when I'm feeling anxious or stressed or I feel overwhelmed is, is breathing. So we wanted, before Alok reads a gorgeous poem uh, that they wrote, I want us to all take a deep inhale and exhale together. So on three, I'm gonna count. We inhale, hold at the top, and just let it all out when you exhale. Ready? One, two, three. Let it out. <sighs> the deepest breath. On the other side of now, when this is all over, I want to attend a funeral every day. I will sit at the back silently crying. When they ask how I knew her, I will smile through the tears. I didn't, but I loved her because once upon a time she breathed, which means the particles that touched the deepest parts of her, she exhaled them and somehow they found their way to me. I am the product of everything that is and was all that has lived and all that has died on this earth. I'm sorry it took a virus to help me remember that simple fact that we all breathe the same air. Thank you, Alok. Everybody give it up for Alok one more time. And so, seeing as we're in NYC, baby, you know, this city and the people of the city have endured so much and y'all always come out stronger on the other side. So we're gonna sing a song for New York, but first, can I drink some water really quick? I'm gonna drink some water before we sing this song because, you know, <laughs> it's been a while and uh, she's getting a little croaky from these fans. I think you guys are gonna know this one. One hand in the air for the big city. Big lights, big dreams, all looking pretty. No place in the world that could compare. Put your lighters in the air, everybody say yeah, 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 yeah. New York, concrete dome.
shape of you. Please welcome United Nations Foundation Next Generation Fellow Valeria Kalunga and United Nations Sustainable Development Goals Advocate Eddie Ndopu. Here's the brutal truth. Even though black and indigenous people, disabled people like me, are the most impacted by climate change, we are the most likely to be excluded from this conversation. 1.5 billion people live with a disability, and most of us live in poverty in the global south. The truth is, I am not supposed to be here, but I am. And I'm... And I'm not going anywhere until... I'm not going anywhere until disabled people are recognized, not just for our plight, but for our power. <laughs> Disability is a language of innovation. We have the answers, so include us in this fight. And royalty countries must deliver on their promises at the COP26 this year to provide $100 billion every year in climate funding for developing countries with a focus on the most marginalized. You can read more about this in a report called Our Future Agenda. If we are going to achieve the UN Sustainable Development Goals, we have to ensure that everyone, and we mean everyone, is included, especially young people. Am I right? Yes, the UN is doing an amazing job. Let's take a look. After the genocide and destruction of the Second World War, a new global organization was founded. Enshrined in its charter is the fact that all people are equal and entitled to the same respect, justice, and human rights. It is a place where people from all races religions and beliefs work together and speak out for us all. It is a place that brings nations together to strive for peace. And it's the last best hope we have in the battle to save the planet. It is agreed goals to shape the future of the world. It's the light in the darkness where there is conflict, where there is injustice, where there is poverty, where there is hunger, there is help on the way. And you will see this sign. The United Nations, the nations of the world, working together to defeat the problems of the world. Please welcome the Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, Her Excellency, Amina J. Mohammed. What's up, New York? I know I'm not Camilla, but I didn't hear you. What's up, New York? <laughs> Global citizens, it's amazing to be back with you today. In Asia, Latin America, Africa, and the rest of the world, 
you don't have to look very far to find a family that really doesn't know where their next meal is coming from. Hunger is on the rise everywhere, and we need to rise up and fight it. And famine, a growing reality for millions, more affected by conflict, COVID, and climate change. But famine and hunger, alongside poverty, are not just about the absence of food. They are about the absence of decisive action by our leaders. Earlier this week, the United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, sounded the alarm bell. And what he had to say to our leaders was that the world must wake up. The world must get serious and act fast. And I'm asking you today to join the United Nations in that wake-up call. Are you ready for the wake-up? There's a lot of you in the hall. Are you ready for the wake-up? <laughs> As global citizens, call, text, tweet the G20 and other leaders. Push them to fund zero hunger. Transform our food systems. Get vaccines to everyone, and I mean all people leaving no one behind. Support our economic recovery it, around the world, but especially in our developing countries. And I'm asking each of you to try to put your money where your mouth is. So try to support more nutritious food, more sustainably produced food. Buy and consume only what you need and not what you want. Continue to defend the planet and to defeat poverty. Helping us keep the promise of the SDGs, our global goals. Our messages are shared around the world, including on a stage in Lagos by the brilliant Femi Kuti. There he is. But like you, I am really thrilled and excited to hear the next voice, our next artist, a voice that is for all generations, my fellow Nigerian, Berna Boy! <laughs> Baby, you love the hymn in the jungle, yeah. Baby, you love the hymn. Baby, you love the fire. Baby, you love the fire. Anjali, Anjali, nah. You the cool in my temperature. If you call, I go come deliver. I no go fall in your hand in ever. So now me, you go down forever. I'm a cocky, no fee, be let down. You're my Anjali, Anjali, nah. Anytime we ask you for the club at the television, your body. Sure, you know, no, say, see when you got it, if it's killing somebody. You know, I feel a vibe, you feel a vibe, so baby, wind it by me. And I know you're shy, but it's cool when we're making love on the low. If you call, I go cut the river. I don't go fall in your hand in the bar. Send a me, you go down forever. I'm a cocky, no baby, let die. You're my Angeli, Angelina. You're my Angeli, Angelina. She went to want to come on, look at Sinai. But you want to be wealthy on me like I eat that. I'm trying to put your ring on your finger too. Your hand in the bar, so now me you go forever. Oh my god, 
Ladies and gentlemen, they call me Burner Boy. I come from Nigeria. Pass me. Go, go. Jerusalem, he's the Yalami. Ah! 
Welcome act actress and activist Bridget Moynihan, an NBA star and the chairman and president of the Dikembe Mutombo Foundation, Dikembe Mutombo. Hello, global citizens. We are here tonight and on stages around the world because the threat of starvation is real for 41 million people across the Horn of Africa, Latin America, and Afghanistan. Their fates have been made all the more urgent by our rising temperatures. Rising temperatures caused in large part by the emissions of industrialized nations, the effects of climate change on how we sustain ourselves as humans are directly linked. So this climate emergency affects every one of us. Climate change is real. Growing up in Congo DRC, we used to go out to play. There used to be trees everywhere, but because of deforestation, they were all cut down. Their natural beauty, their fill and form were destroyed and increased poverty. So in addition, in addition to significantly reducing their emissions, which is critical to halting climate change, today we are calling on businesses and governments to join us in committing to defend this planet by protecting and restoring an additional billion trees by 2022. We can all make a change in this world. It's possible when we dream big. So let's do this, global citizens. One billion trees. Here 
to help us get it done, please welcome United States Senator Chris Coons and the founder of Havali Investments and Sangreal Foundation, Brian Sheff. Hello, New York. As a proud global citizen partner, I can think of no greater work than to develop new solutions to protect our one home, Earth. That's why I'm proud to stand with global citizens and organizations like Rewild as we work together to create an equitable and nature-positive planet for ourselves and future generations. By taking care of our planet, we also take care of each other. Philanthropy is important, but we need sound government policies. That's why I'm so proud to stand with my friend, Senator Chris Coons. Thank you, Brian. I am deeply grateful for wonderful, engaged private sector champions like you, folks who are personally committed to conservation. We all have to come together to confront climate change. 88 years ago, President Roosevelt tapped into the power of young people, of national service, during the Great Depression to create jobs and restore our environment when he launched the Civilian Conservation Corps. Now it's time for a modern CCC, a bold and diverse climate corps to help vulnerable communities prepare for climate change. Creating a new 21st century CCC will build on AmeriCorps, ensure that service members are paid a living wage, and give hundreds of thousands of young people a chance to earn money for college while working to save our common home, our planet. I'm helping lead the fight in Congress to include the CCC in the Build Back Better bill and give young people a chance to work together to fight climate change. Whether that's installing solar panels, planting billions of trees, reviving our urban and national parks, and restoring wild places. Global citizens, you've already done so much to make a difference. Won't you join us in this fight to make this program a reality here in the U.S. and in countries around the world? Thank you. Thank you. God's gift to humanity. What do you think? Shall we get started, Paris? Paris, est-ce que vous êtes là?
think it's gonna be a long, long time. Yeah! Trees. God's gift to humanity. Trees create the oxygen we breathe. They absorb the carbon dioxide that threatens our climate. But trees and entire forests are at grave risk. Businesses are choosing profits over protecting nature. That means that half of all our forests are gone and it's slowly killing us. But there is hope. There's a very simple, practical solution that everyone can take part in. We can all do our part by planting a tree or two or supporting people who do. If we protect forests and plant trees, we will truly help solve the climate crisis. It's that simple. Join the Trillion Tree Challenge. Let's hear it, everyone, for Jane Goodall. She rep represents the impact that one person's passion can have on the entire world. She is a pioneer and an inspiration to us all. Jane once said, I saw places we had utterly destroyed, covered with concrete, but give nature a chance and she'll reclaim it. By calling on the governments, businesses, and philanthropics, to contribute resources needed to protect and restore at least one billion trees by 2020. We can give the mother nature the fighting chance she needed. One company has heard the call and is making a commitment to defend our planet. On behalf of Salesforce, its chief executive officer of Salesforce, Mark Benioff. The world is in a climate emergency. We've emitted more than 100 gigatons of carbon through fossil fuels since the first industrial revolution. And we've emitted 600 gigatons by deforesting half of the world's trees. We've gone from 6 trillion trees to 3 trillion trees. When we deforested those 3 trillion trees, we emitted 600 gigatons of carbon. Now's the time to put the trees back on the planet. Let's plant 1 trillion trees. That's why we want you to join us at 1T.org. My company, Salesforce, well, we're going to plant 100, 100 million trees. And the U.S. chapter of 1T.org, we're going to plant 50 billion trees. So let's do it together. Let's all go plant a tree. Thank you. Thank you to our presenting partners of Global Citizen Live in New York, City, and Cisco. Hey, Woo. it's a great honor to perform here tonight for you. Let's work together to change the world. Thank you. So as Frederick Douglass said, eternal vigilance is the price of liberty. My fear right now is that the world is spiraling out of control because we, the people, our global community have lost that vigilance. But here, today, seeing, seeing you, seeing all of your faces, feeling your spirit gives me a renewed sense of hope that we can defend our planet, that we can defeat poverty. Ain't none of this new. We've been in peril before, but when we reach the tipping point, the vigilant people activate. We get things done. Who's with me? And we ain't backing down. I'm going to say it again. Who's with me? This right here is our 10th Global Citizen Festival. It rests on the shoulders of other musical artists who, seeing the need for their generation, created memorable events that have led us to today. Tonight, Chinese global superstar pianist Long Long is here to pay homage to some of the moments within those events. Beginning with the 1985 Live Aid concert, 
which was organized to raise funds and awareness of the famine in Ethiopia that killed 1.2 million people. Among the many standout performances was a never-to-be-forgotten moment by Queen. <laughs> Bravo! Throughout the 70s and today, John and Yoko have allowed the use of this song to help raise millions of dollars for various causes over the years. The fact that we stand tonight, where we stand tonight, is a scant quarter mile from John and Yoko's New York home right over there, and that John considered this city his home is not lost on us. I am honored to sing this next song with Long Long. Imagine no
In 1988, to celebrate his birthday, while he still remained in prison, some of the world's most dedicated artists gathered at Wembley Stadium in London to celebrate Nelson Mandela's 70th birthday. Among the many highlights from that show was a performance by the unforgettable and my favorite, Whitney Houston, who many remember as singing directly to her spiritual guide, Mr. Mandela. On January 21st, 1985, 39 of the world's biggest musical personalities gathered at a and Studios following the American Music Awards to record a song written by Michael Jackson and Lionel Richie that would become the most successful charitable record in history. Both artists not only had careers filled with philanthropic support, both public and private, including Michael's recognition by the Guinness Book for his support of the most charities, but We Are the World has raised over $63 million for USA for Africa in the 36 years since its release. Time to end 
welcome South African TV personality and global citizen advocate, Bonong Mateba. Thank you. Good evening, New York City. As the grandfather of my home country, Nelson Mandela once said, it always seems impossible until it is done. And global citizens, we have a lot of work to do, especially when it comes to hunger. In South Africa, there's conflict, there's instability, climate change and extreme poverty, and the pandemic hit us very hard. 6.5 million people, that's 11% of our population, suffered hunger way before the pandemic. And during COVID, 46% of South Africans still don't have enough food. Last year, 45 million children suffered from wasting, a life-threatening form of malnutrition that disproportionately affects the young and the poorest. We now fear that 9 million more children may suffer by 2022. One organization working to solve this is the Children's Investment Fund Foundation, who are making a grant of $50 million to UNICEF for urgent prevention and treatment efforts for children across the globe. And I'm proud to tell you that UNICEF is matching this with an additional 50 million US dollars. This means that $100 million to tackle this deadly but preventable form of malnutrition. When we invest in improving child nutrition, we can end hunger, eliminate nutrition, malnutrition, I beg your pardon, and transform the world. But there is no time to waste. Thank you. Welcome back, Global Citizen Ambassador Rachel Brosnahan and the Director of Education Cannot Wait, Yasmin Sharif. We know that one of the clearest ways to break the cycle of poverty is through education. And if we want to defeat poverty, then we need to make sure that every single child has access to a quality education. Thank you. Our beloved Rachel has worked with us for so long. Almost 128 million children are even at greater risk of missing out on the right to learn because of COVID-19. And that's why today governments, private sector, businesses and donors have mobilized 1.7 billion dollars for the transformative, pioneering work of education cannot wait. Global citizens, global citizens, we love you all, took action and made your voices heard. And I am pleased to share with you that the government of Germany provided us today with a, with a pledge of 50 million euros and the European Commission with another 25 million euros and more is to come from this beautiful country this coming week and we welcome more of you to support us and say that education cannot wait for any child please welcome all everyone and remember that these kids who are in conflict in suffering as refugees they are the ones who are going to change the world and make humanity a better place. Thanks to you, global citizens. Thank you. Please welcome Jesus Knight.
please welcome Jesus Nice and the Kid Miro from Showtime's Jesus and Miro. Yeah. Go with Citizen, can I get a year? Yeah. Yo, it's wild to think that people in Lagos, Rio, Paris, everywhere are connected to us right now. Right now, y'all. Yeah, and not to just see us provide hilarious commentary on the latest news today. We're united with global citizens around the world because we all realize that it's time for change. That's right. Lack of social justice creates a cycle of poverty that women and people of color disproportionately suffer from and find themselves trapped in. Mm. And if you look close enough, you can see the direct line from lack of equity to income insecurity. Talk on when it. People are denied access to resources based on their gender uh -huh. or race. They're also robbed of options and the ability to change their circumstances. Right. Last year, people everywhere took to the streets to demand social justice and equal rights. And we need to channel that same energy to defeat poverty. That's right. By demanding equity, we can set the wheels in motion to create a future where problems like this are just a thing of the past. That's right. It's not enough to talk about the issues. It's time to do something about it. And guess what? You have that power. Mm -hmm. It may seem like these issues are impossible, but your voice, your power, that's it. And if enough of us join together and say the same thing, leaders, corporations, and the people in charge have to listen. Keep fighting. We love you, Global Citizen. We out. You. BXO Day East Shima. Pow. Where will we be in five years? In 50 years? Let's be here and here. Let's deliver technology to give everyone, everywhere access to security and privacy, to equality and fairness, to a sustainable world. Cisco has made it its purpose to power an inclusive future for all. Where will we be in 50 years? Let's go see. Between the world and what we make of it, there's a bridge. Cisco, the bridge to possible. Please welcome Chair and CEO of Cisco, Chuck Robbins, and the President of the Ford Foundation, Darren Walker. Good evening, global citizens. It's such an honor to be with all of you for this amazing and historic event and to be with so many like-minded people who are driven by purpose and the desire to drive change for good. As you just saw at Cisco, our purpose is to power an inclusive future for all. Whether it's our technology that can help bridge the digital divide, our $150 million investment in HBCUs, the Cisco's Foundation's $100 million Climate Action Pledge, or our pledge to be net zero by 2040. We are so passionate about this cause, but we also know there's so much more to do. And that's why we're all here today. A key part to making real meaningful progress is having incredible partners like Global Citizen. I'm also so proud to have another great partner here with me today, Darren Walker from the Ford Foundation. who is one of the most dedicated and passionate leaders I know. Darren? Thank you, Chuck. And thank you, Global Citizen, for having me. And like Chuck said, the only way we're going to be able to solve these issues is through partnership. And at the Ford Foundation, we believe in the inherent dignity of all people and that we must work together to usher in a better, more inclusive future and world. We share this purpose, the vision, and commitment to social justice with Cisco, Global Citizen, and every single one of you taking action. Thank you for being on this journey with us. We are united with global citizens around the world to make some noise, to disrupt the status quo and make the world stop and pay attention. And I think they're listening. So let's make sure they hear us. Are you guys ready to change the world? Yeah. That's right. Central Park, are you ready for some more music? Yeah. Oh, well, you're not going to believe this. She has helped people everywhere see the beauty in themselves and the world around them. Global citizens, make some noise for Lizzo! Global citizen. I don't know about y'all, but I've been waiting on this 
change but I feel like I don't even have to talk to you we can see it right unprecedented storms wildfires in our forest we are watching the effects of climate change right now in front of our eyes and as an individual it can be scary like what can one person do to help the earth but now that I'm looking at thousands of people here right now It's moments like this that give me hope for the future of our planet. Yes, we're here because the music is awesome, but we're also here because we care. I want you to say it with me. We are, we are 
the generation to make a change. We are, we are the generation, the generation. To, save to save our planet. We care, bitch. We, care, bitch. We, care. we care. Now, I know y'all feel me, because I be like, spending all your time trying to break a woman down. Real shit is going on, baby. Take a look around. Oh, I know y'all feel me on these rumors. Let's get it. I want you to sing this with me. But they don't know I do it for the culture. God damn. They say I should watch the shit I post. Oh, god damn. Say I'm turning big girls into hoes. Oh, god damn. They say I get groupies at my shows. Are you my groupie tonight? Is I true, yeah? But you heard that's true, yeah. I f him and you, yeah. If you believe I do that, had to cut some hoes loose, yeah. Indy ain't no loose lips. Not them hoes trying to sue me. Bitch, I don't give two shit. All the rumors are true, yeah. I've been in the bamboo, yeah. Focused on this music. My ex, man, he blew it. Last year I thought I would lose it. Reading stuff on the internet. My smoothie cleanse, my diet. No, I ain't Drake. <laughs> Spending all your time trying to break a woman down. Real shit is going on. Baby, take a look around. If you thought that I was ratchet with my ass hanging out, just wait until the sun open. They let me out the house. Yeah. Talking, talking, talking. Give them something to talk about. Was that true? Yeah, fake ass, fake booze, yeah, made a million ass suits, yeah, yeah, I be running with fake news, yeah, Cardi and Poppin', no, that's the machine, nobody listen, they buying them sheets, they even posted on Russell with C's, I'm lying in language I can't even read, the fuck do this work, I'm a black bitch with some pop hits, used to pop off when they pop shit, but I'm calmed down and I'm locked in, and my records live in the top ten, let's go!
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. My name is Lizzo. Very happy to be here in beautiful New York. Don't cast me. Don't cast me. Hold on now, don't me. Into the thick of it. Into the thick of it. Into the thick of it. Bitch. Let's go. Ba 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 ba. We're tramping through the bush. On and on we push into the thick of it, but we can't see where we're going. Don't make me pull my thick bitch tricks out. Speaking of, thank you so much to Global Citizen for having me. You know, big black girl from Detroit by way of Houston, Texas. Doing big ass things with my life. I'm just so grateful to every time I can step on a stage and sing for y'all. Thank you so much. And now I'm a rich bitch. That's exciting, that's never happened. And I've been like, what kind of rich bitch do I want to be? And I decided I want to be a philanthropist. I want to give back. Why would I get so much? Why would God give me so much if I can't give it back? So thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to give back. I have to shout out that the land we're standing on is Seneca Village. Before it was Central Park, it was Seneca Village. And if you don't know what it is, that was an affluent African-American community that lived here in the early 1900s. And they were evicted and bulldozed so they could build this park. As we talk about climate change and making the world a better place and solving homelessness, we also have to talk about the institutionalized racism that happens in this country all the time. And if we don't talk about our history constructively, how can we build a better future? It's time to talk about things and it's time to make a change. And it starts within. You gotta be better to yourself so you can be better to others. So can you do an exercise with me? 
I want you to close your eyes and I want you to just, it's just you right now. There's no 60,000 people, it's just you. I want you to say, I love you. I love you. You, are beautiful. you are beautiful. And you can do anything. Now, I want you to look at the person next to you. It could be anybody. Be safe. It's a pandemic. All right. Now, say, I love you. I love you. You are beautiful. You are beautiful. And you can do anything. It's my turn, bitch. Look at me, ho. Say, I love you, Lizzo. I love you, Lizzo. You are beautiful, bitch.
my name is Shia Bastida. I'm 19 years old and I'm a climate justice activist. The biggest strike we organized was the September 20th climate strike, which brought 300,000 people to New York, right here in Battery Park. I'm from San Pedro Tultepec, Mexico. My town has suffered a lot from the first-hand effects of the climate crisis, which are pollution and extraction, and the second-hand effects of the climate crisis, which are the drought that we experienced, which was the harshest drought that Mexico has seen in 70 years. And after that, excessive rain that resulted in flooding. That's when I decided to follow my parents' footsteps into the climate movement. Our river, El Rio Lerma, is one of the most polluted rivers in Mexico. My dad actually used to bathe in that river when he was young, and I'm never gonna have that opportunity. We used to be a town that was rooted in a culture and tradition of fishermen. That was the way that we lived our lives. Our culture changed drastically. Now my town focuses on building furniture, and we don't have that connection as deeply as we used to. The climate crisis strips away culture and tradition, and that strips away knowledge and wisdom. The same knowledge and wisdom that we need to actually take care of the world. Please welcome climate justice activist, Shia Bastida. Give it up for Lisa, everyone! Goodbye! Thank you! Wasn't that so amazing? Let's clap for Lisa one more time! Well, hello everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, I'm a climate justice activist and Lisa talked about climate justice and I just want to reiterate. The climate crisis is something that is already being experienced by communities across the globe. From the wildfires in California, Siberia and Australia, to the floods in Sudan and Louisiana, to the loss of culture through the forest, to things like deforestation. In less than two months, world leaders will meet at COP26. And our message to them is that we must leave the dependency on fossil fuels behind. We must transition to 100% renewable energy. We must put all of our efforts into resilience and protection of frontline communities. They owe it to future generations as much as they owe it to their present constituents to create a climate conscious world. Everyone here, all of you want to make this world a better place. And we have to make, woo, yes. And we have to make sure that our leaders are held to the same standards because after all, they work for us. So let's do this. What do we want? Climate justice. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? When do we want it? Now. What do we want? When do we want it? Now. Woo! Goodbye. Please welcome actors and activists Bridget Moynihan and Katie Holmes. Let's give Shea another round. Our carbon dioxide is the highest it's been in the last 800,000 years. And you know how we bring those CO2 levels down? Cut our emissions and restore, conserve, and plant more trees to breathe in that CO2 and lower Earth's temperature. Look around the stage. You see these 64 saplings. They're all indigenous to the region, and they're going to be planted tomorrow in Central Park, Inwood Hills Park, and Seton Falls Park. So download the Global Citizens app. Take action with us and let's defend the planet. Here to help us do that is the Chief Marketing and Communications Officers of Accenture, Jill Kramer. Hi everyone, thank you for being here. I'm Jill Kramer and I have the privilege of being one of the more than 600,000 people of Accenture. And while I know you guys came here to see all of these great artists, you also came here to be part of real change. 
And real change is what the incredible people of Accenture in every corner of the world are committed to make happen. One of the greatest changes we must make is to reduce and eliminate carbon emissions. It matters to everyone. As a global company, we're making significant progress to be net zero by 2025 in the new ways we're powering our offices, being thoughtful about how we travel, and how we work with our suppliers. And we can do more. So today, we're announcing that we're investing in nature-based carbon removal projects around the world. These projects are the process of restoring and improving land to allow natural ecosystems to rebound and thrive and while removing CO2 from the atmosphere. We will reforest land with native species, rebuild biodiversity, and make agriculture more sustainable and help create green jobs, all while removing carbon. Over the next 20 years, this program promises to physically remove over 13 million metric tons of carbon. I'm inspired to see the change you're all making, and I'm honored with all of the people of Accenture to be doing it with you. Thank you. Please join us in welcoming someone who's championed the causes of Global Citizen along with her husband, Hugh Jackman, since the very beginning. Actor and activist, Deborah Lee Furness. Hello, Central Park. It's so great to be back together again. Hugh and I have been proud supporters of the Global Citizen movement since the beginning. And today, thousands of you advocated on climate, hunger, vaccine distribution, and your voice matters, and we hear you. So join us. Go to actnow.global to retweet the pledge to defend the planet and end the hunger crisis. Now, unfortunately, Hugh couldn't be with us tonight, he, but he is cheering us on from London, so he wanted to share a few tips how everyone can do their bit. Thanks all for coming. COVID-19 stopped the world in its tracks, lives cut short, and impacts on global systems like food distribution has pushed many of the world's most vulnerable communities to the brink of famine. It is essential that we do all we can to curb this famine, which is accelerating in part due to climate change. It is an emergency on multiple fronts. As temperatures rise, water runs out, and CO2 fills our atmosphere, food production will keep falling, and distribution networks become even harder to maintain. It's essential that we rebalance our climate and restore a billion trees by the end of 2022. Trees keep the planet cool. They also help the planet breathe by converting carbon dioxide into clean, pure oxygen. We only have one planet. We have to act now. Some of us, like governments and businesses, have the power to make big changes, but everyone can do something to prevent global warming from reaching beyond 1.5 degrees Celsius. Reduce the volume of single-use plastic. Cut back on meat. Buy fair trade. Compost. Ride a bike. And here's an easy one. Plant a tree. Hey, plant two trees. We need to get to a billion trees by the end of 2022. So let's start now. Earth is our home and it's under threat. So keep using your voice. Together, we can defend our planet. Please welcome Pada State, Brazil State Secretary for the Environment and Sustainability, Mauro Odilmeida and the Deputy Director of the Green Climate Fund, Babita Bisht. Hi, Central Park. Hi, Global Citizen. As you can see, I'm from Pará. I stayed from Amazonia. Global Citizens spoke up about climate change. That's why today I'm pleased to announce that we will create at least three, three new protected areas expand by 25 percent the sustainable forest management area and we will establish plans for climate change mitigation and adaptation and we will achieve net zero emissions before 2050 with 2030 targets to prevent more than 1.5 degrees of warming and now 
call on the richest nations to deliver all their $100 billion commitment for climate action in developing countries. Uh, let's go, job! Bora trabalhar! Thank you! Hello, New York! Great energy! We all have to lead when it comes to defending the planet. This is what we do at the Green Climate Fund. It is the largest global climate fund supporting developing countries to reduce emissions while building resilience to the devastating impact of climate change. I'm delighted to announce that working with our contributors, we have advanced payments to make funding available for immediate action. This means that we have unlocked another 1.2 billion US dollars for new investments to protect the planet and people in the coming months just before the big climate meeting in Glasgow. Thank you so much, global citizens. Appreciate it. Procter & Gamble has joined the race to zero and is committing to achieve net zero greenhouse gas emissions across our operations and supply chain by 2040. We hope you will join us to do the small actions at home that can make a world of difference. Our brands have joined the fight against climate change. Charmin aims to keep forests as forests and will regrow at least two trees for every one they use. And Charmin and PNG have teamed up with the Arbor Day Foundation to help restore 1 million trees in areas devastated by natural disasters by 2025. Tide is committed to decarbonize laundry. It's simple. That means we need to inspire more people to wash in cold water because the vast majority of the greenhouse gas emissions in laundry come from heating the water. Ice tea calling on everyone to turn to cold washing with Tide. Please welcome actor, musician, and Tide cold caller, Ice tea. Global citizens, make some noise! And you thought you were all on the do not call list, all right? Over the next two years, Tide is committed to encouraging consumers to do 1.3 billion more loads of laundry in cold water. That means 1.8 million tons of CO2 saved. Make some noise for that. That's what we're trying to do. I'm all in with P&G to help protect our planet because it's our home and it's the only one we got. Respect. Please welcome Sean Mendez.
truth or do I feel to how I feel? Or wouldn't it be nice to live inside a world that isn't black and white? I wonder what it's like to be my friends. Hope that they don't think I forget about them. I wonder. Said I was a saint, I wonder When I cry into my hands I'm conditioned to feel like it makes me less of a man And I wonder if someday you'll be by my side Tell me that the world will end up alright I wonder She gets close, yeah She pulls me in Enough to keep me Blessing, sing it out It may be I should stop and stop Confessing, uh, confessing, yeah I've been shaking I love you and you go crazy Take on my inhibition You take me places That tear on my reputation I know we'd be alright I know we would be alright If you were by my
That my time is, but I can't move on if we're still gonna talk. And is it wrong for me to not want it? I want all love, all the strings attached. Oh, I'm good at keeping my distance. I know that you're the feeling I'm missing. You know yeah, that I hate to admit, but everything means nothing. Global Citizen, how you guys doing out there? Wow. This is uh, first time back on stage in front of people in two and a half years, and this is magical. I'm so, I'm so happy to be here tonight. This is an amazing, amazing show, and I'm honored to be on this stage. Um, sing along as loud as you guys can for the rest of the show. I love you, thank you so much. Yeah, just let me know 
I was 15 when the world put me on a pedestal. I had big dreams, doing shows and making memories. Made some bad moves, trying to act cool, up somebody jealous. Yeah, lifting me up, lifting me up, yeah. Tear me down, tear me down. I take responsibility for everything I've done. Holding it against you like you're the holy one. But if I put it if I trip, but if I put it if I fall, then am I up in my stay? Just let me know. But if I put it if I sit, but if I put it if I break, yeah, then am I up in my stay? Just let me
This is a new one called Summer of Love. Sing it if you know. Kisses on your body felt like heaven. We were taking it slow. How you guys feeling out there? So, um, at some point over the last couple of years, I was lucky enough to be scrolling through Instagram, and uh, I stumbled across the most incredibly talented, most sincere, most amazing poet I've ever seen and I've ever heard, and I, I got to become friends with her over the last few months, and. Um, I'm just so in awe by the way, by how she puts things, and by how she makes you feel, and she goes straight to the heart. And I, uh, I wanted to give her the mic tonight to read a poem to you guys. She is an incredible, incredible human being. Please give the warmest welcome to Fanta Bala. My name is Fonta Ballo, poet, activist, author from Harlem, New York, and I'm here to share a poem. <laughs> Stepping into the moment, adrenaline rushing, thoughts racing, hearts pumping, you're here. And even after this crazy year, you're alive. For some of us, we barely survive, but perseverance isn't a contest. There is no first place as long as every day you remember to show up for yourself, then that's most of the race. We get so caught up trying to catch up with the next, we forget that sometimes the bare minimum is okay. 
Some days waking up is just enough and resting isn't necessarily giving up. Reaching out for help doesn't make you a lost cause. Mental health is our most important battle and we cannot lose this war. And I'm speaking to the people who really lost it all. Rock Bottom was created for temporary distress. You learn at your lowest so you can shine at your best. And a wise man once said, even when the walls are caving in, we're never giving up. Be so passionate, it becomes a genetic marker so you know what that means. It just isn't in our blood. Thank you. It's like the walls are caving in Sometimes I feel like giving up But I just can't It isn't in my blood Laying on the bathroom floor Feeling nothing Afraid to be alone again Give me something I could take to ease my mind slowly Just have a drink and you'll feel better Just take a home and you'll feel better Keep telling me that it gets better, no But does it ever with me?
Don't let anyone ever tell you that there isn't progress. That great things don't get done. That making the world better is impossible. There are amazing things happening around the world every day. Just look at what has been achieved. More than one billion people have been lifted out of poverty since 1990. More children than ever now live to see their fifth birthday. Polio is on the brink of eradication. COVID vaccines were developed in record time. More women are in positions of power. Renewable energy is becoming cheaper than fossil fuels. 90% of the world's population now has access to electricity. But there is still so much needed to get the to-do list for people and the planet done. With your passion and determination, we can go faster, get stronger, and do better. For fairer progress, for everyone. Use your superpower. Be a global citizen. Please welcome the head of the United Nations World Food Program and the 2020 Nobel Peace Prize laureate, David Beasley, and the majority leader in the United States Senate, Chuck Schumer. Whoa! Is Sean Mendez the greatest? Now, hello, Central Park. Hello, New Yorkers. Hello, global citizens. And hello, Brooklyn. Brooklyn's in the house. Now, we all know this has been an awful summer of weather calamities, hurricanes and flooding in the east, which is getting too much rain, wildfires and heat waves in the west, getting too little rain. Anyone, anyone who doesn't believe that climate change is upon us does not have their eyes open. You know, folks, this past year of COVID was really awful. But if we do nothing about climate change soon, every year will be worse than COVID, and each year will be worse after that. So Congress must act. And if we... You bet. And if we build back, and if our Build Back Better plan is adopted, we're fighting for it right now. The amount of deadly carbon dioxide which poisons our atmosphere, suffocates our globe, will be on a path to be cut in half, in half by 2030. Our plan puts us on the path to 80% of our power coming from clean electricity, wind and solar and puts us on a road to a clean car future where every car on the road is clean. And in our bill, folks, we will make sure that 40% of the benefits go to the disadvantaged communities and communities of color. Because not only must we defend the planet, we must defeat poverty too. This is a once in a generation opportunity Call your senators, call your congressmen. Together, we're fighting to make this happen. Are we gonna win this fight? Yeah. And now it's my honor to introduce Nobel Prize winner, fighting global hunger, David Beasley. Senator, thank you very, very much. It's great to be on the stage because we would not have won the Nobel Peace Prize had it not been for the support of senators like Senator Schumer, Senator Coons, Lindsey Graham, and so many others. Thank you, Senator. There's over $400 trillion of wealth on planet Earth today. And yet, every four seconds, someone is dying from hunger. Shame on us. And every single day, the cost of war on the global GDP is $41 billion and yet 24,000 people will die today from hunger. Shame on us. And at the height of COVID, the billionaires 
Their average net worth increase per day, Chuck, was $5 billion, and yet I am begging to feed the poor. Shame on us. COVID has killed 5 million people, and at the same time, killed 17 million people have died from hunger. And during COVID, the number of people around the world that are now marching towards the brink of starvation has doubled to over 270 million people. If we do not act today, millions will starve, nations will destabilize, and millions will migrate by necessity. If we're struggling today with a population of over 7 billion, what do you think, what do you expect will happen when we are a world of over 10 billion people by 2050. And by 2050, Senator, due to climate change, we anticipate over 1 billion, not million, billion people to be displaced around the world. Wake up, New York. Wake up, America. And wake up, planet Earth, at the World Food Program. When we don't have enough money to feed the hungry, we have to choose who eats and who doesn't eat, who lives and who dies. How would you like that job? Don't make us choose. America, New York, step up, speak out, and join us on the fight. Thank you very much. Please welcome the Executive Vice President of Global Enterprise Sales for Worldwide Technologies, Matt Horner. New York, how are you feeling? I feel your energy and passion for Global Citizen and its mission. The mission of Worldwide Technology is to be a great place to work for all. The mission of Worldwide Technology is to be a great place to work for all, and together with Global Citizen, the world can be a great place to live for all. Now, many years from now, it will be easy for future generations to look back on this point in history and see great injustice and extreme divisiveness. Is that the legacy we want to leave? Or we can make history by accelerating meaningful advancement in equity and inclusion, working tirelessly to protect our planet and truly defeating poverty. It's up to all of us to be positive change makers, to leave a world behind better than what we found it. And in that spirit, and on behalf of Worldwide Technology, I'm excited to announce a continued $3 million financial and social commitment focused on driving inclusion in the economy and creating a more diverse and equitable workforce by 2023. Together, let's make a new world happen. Enjoy the show. Please welcome artist and activist, Andy Cohen. Hey, New York City! How lucky are we to be in Central Park on such a beautiful night. Global citizens, I just wanna say thanks to everyone here for getting the vaccine, thanks for masking up. This is how we get through it and keep everybody safe. Thank you. Uh, the greatest thing in the world happened in my life about two years ago. I had a son. His name is Ben. Thank you. <laughs> when he was born, I looked into his eyes. There was no hate, no bias, no bigotry, just love. That's how we come into this world, and that's how we hopefully one day will leave it. And while we're living in it, we need it, too. 
During the pandemic, all of these inequities were laid bare. It's my honor to welcome a group of people working at the grassroots to help make this world more just and equal. Central Park, please welcome Ridgeway White, the president and CEO of the Charles Stuart Mott Foundation, Vivek Maru, founder and CEO of Namadi, and Atiano Odiambo, the director of the New Legal Empowerment Fund. Thanks, everybody. Five point one billion people lack access to justice. But I have hope because activists are addressing this challenge head on. That's why we are proud to launch the Legal Empowerment Fund. The fund aims to mobilize one hundred million dollars to help communities advocate for their rights and to secure justice. Justice, y'all, justice matters for nearly everything we care about. From stopping the pandemic through equitable vaccine access to tackling our grave climate crisis, Namathi is honored today to commit $5 million to help launch this new fund. In Mott's hometown of Flint and across the globe, we've seen how life-changing it can be when people have access to justice. Today, the Mott Foundation joined with the Hewlett Foundation to commit a total of $15 million to the fund. Global citizens, please join us in creating a more just world. Thank you. Global citizens, can we get a yerk? Yeah. New York was good. Yeah. Global citizens, make some mother noise. Our boy from Philly, give it up for me. Yeah. Another yeah. vibe. Hey, G, Sion, I love you. New York City, what's up? If you're doing it for charity, I need you one hand in the sky right now. Hands up, hands up. Two hands in the sky right now. Let's do it. Drop it. Let's, 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 let's go. I say pound, pound. Oh! 
call you rich, rich. Call me big fish. I could Lori help me on my wish list. What else? That's the only thing I wanted for Christmas. Now what you tell to go? I been have my way out here, yeah, yeah. No, that's facts, facts. You ain't living that issue, sad, yeah, we know that's that's cat. You ain't got the answer when you see me, no. Let's go. This is your VA. Can we go? Trap, quote. Trap, pants up. Just a blow. Hands up. Expensive pain to drop October 1st. Make some noise if you want to go get that. Shout out to all the pretty ladies in the house. If yeah. you're pretty, raise your hand so I can see right now. Put your hands up. Go ahead, up. drop that. Ladies. 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 Hands up, ladies. Come on. Now what you going to do? Sing it. Sing it. Come on. Tell me how you Songs I love to perform. Could you put a lighter in the air? I want to light New York up to a whole nother level. Light is up. I need the people up above to see all the lights in the sky. If you lost somebody in the pandemic, make some noise for them right now. I want to say shout out to everybody that survived through the pandemic. We back outside. We on the road. Shout out to Global Citizen. And I want to drop this. Keep your lighters up for the whole song unless your phone about to die. Let's do it. When the beat drop, I need all lights going crazy in the building right now. Light us up. Light us up. Keep them up. Light us up. Everybody. Light us up. Uh. Light it up. Let's uh. go. I used to pray for times like this, to rhyme like this. So I had to grind like that, to shine like this. Locked up shit in the back of the paddy wagon, cuts locked on wrist. See my dreams unfold. Nightmares come true. It was time to marry the game, and I said, if you want it, you gotta see it with a clear eye view. Got sure that she trying bless it, like I said, I chill. Let's make a nigga sneeze. Nigga, please, for them trick and squeeze and get cream. Never let them walls get in between, or we'll be started. Lil' hit the bottom line, harder they love me when I was stuck, and they hit it when I put it. I go and get it, regardless. Go. Draw it like I'm an artist, no crawling, we're straight to walking with foreigns, and my garage is a foreign. Light, Light us up! Light us up! They tell me, get them out! I did it without her. What else? I did shit with my Look, nigga, I'm up. I see as a hockey ring, Philly, nigga. I was really. When I bought the Rolls Royce, they thought it was sleep. What else? Then I bought that new Ferrari. Hey, the rest in peace. Hey, the rest in peace. Rest in peace to the parking lot. Phantom so big. Light is up. Light is up. You ain't talking about light is up. I need all that in the sky. When this shit drops, I need everybody. 
At the Coca-Cola Company, believe a world without waste is possible. We know we've been part of the problem, but we can also be part of the solution. That's why we're partnering with the Ocean Cleanup, a not-for-profit tech company to initially target 15 rivers together in support of their mission to rid the world's oceans of plastic. With 80% of the plastic flowing into our oceans coming from just 1,000 rivers, this partnership will help accelerate the group's river project. By combining the Ocean Cleanup's cutting-edge technology with our global capabilities, access and boots on the ground, we can really make a tangible difference. Our goal for a world without waste is to collect and recycle a bottle or can for every one we sell by 2030. But we can make a difference now, together with you. To learn more and join our mission, visit theoceancleanup.com. Please welcome Chairman and CEO of Coca-Cola, James Quincy, and Chief Communications, Sustainability and Strategic Officer, B. Perez. <laughs> Hello, New York. What a crowd. On behalf of everyone at Coca-Cola, B and I are thrilled to join Global Citizen and all of you here today. As you saw in the video, we are investing in innovative, innovative solutions like the Ocean Cleanup, which was created in 2013 by Boyan Slat. Boyan's vision is to rid the world of the world's plastics and ours is to ensure no more plastic gets there in the first place. That's why we're focused on collecting and recycling all our packaging in an effort to achieve our vision of a world without waste. Thank you, James. Wow, look at all of these people. I am really proud to work for Coca-Cola and I hope you all someday come work for us. And as Lizzo said earlier, we all know that defending our planet does require action and focus 
first from ourselves, which is why we're driving action with climate and supporting a vision to be net zero carbon. And we're starting with a, thank you, woo! Yes, come on, net zero carbon. <laughs> yes. That, and we're adding in, in between, because 2050 is too long to wait, a 2030 science-based target in line with the Paris Agreement. So thank you to all of you here who are driving decisions and pushing companies every day, to the partners who are on the journey with us, a special thank you to Global Citizen for bringing us together and putting these amazing artists here on the stage who volunteered their time to focus on these important causes, people and our planet. I know, enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you for letting us be here with you all. That's it. Yes, sir. Please welcome the mayor of New York City, Bill de Blasio. Everybody, welcome. New York City is proud to be at the forefront of the climate revolution with our own New York City Green New Deal. The COVID crisis showed us what's possible when people work together for change. We're going to harness that power to protect our planet and every person on it, especially the young people of the globe. We will not let them down but it will take bold change. It will take things that are not a sacrifice, they are necessary. This is our greatest opportunity to create a better, and more just world for all, but we've got to do it now. We've got to strand the fossil fuels in the ground, bring forward renewable energy. This next few years will be transformative. Tonight will be inspiring, and New York City is proud to host this lineup of amazing artists, especially our hometown heroes, Jennifer Lopez and Cindy Lauper. Tonight, we celebrate the beginning of a new era, a world where we put people over profits and every citizen has a voice. Thank you. Rising sea levels, encroachment of deserts, uh, issues that relate to drying up of rivers, uh, the solar management of the planet, all of these things have an impact on the air our children breathe and the water they drink. What would their world look like in 2050? Will they be able to enjoy nature like I did in my childhood? And it's a question also in giving hope to the next generation. I don't want uh, them to be the victims of the decisions that we are not able to take today. They will ask themselves a simple question. Why didn't our parents act sooner to stop climate change? That's why all of our governments should take part in a global effort to address these issues. Next generations deserve our responsibility and our awareness. Next generations will be committed to this transformation and they will carry it in some way in their DNA. Young people have unlimited potential to change the future of our planet. They are the source of hope and power of change. COVID brought us closer to nature, closer to the idea of protecting our biodiversity. So that gives me the optimism uh, and, the, and the sense that there's a window of opportunity here that we must grab to really deal comprehensively with the climate change threat. But it starts with each and every one of us, every day. It's serious, it is urgent, but there's hope. It is up to us. It is time to act. And we can do it. Please welcome Jennifer Lopez.
Ella lo sabe, ella lo sabe Ahora le toca a ella Tomarse la botella Y salirse a divertir And it goes like this Un, dos, tres, avanza Left, right, left, avanza One, two, step, avanza All she wanna do is just Cambia el paso Cambia el paso Cambia el paso All she wanna do is just Cambia el paso, cambia el paso, cambia el paso. All she wanna do is just. Su vida está mejor ahora sin él. Sabe que su cadera no le vayan. No necesita nadie para estar bien. Ella no falla, ella no falla. Baile, tú quieres baile, yo te pa darle así como ves. Ahora me se enfila con mis amigas, matando la liga así como ves. Eh, ahora le toca a ella. Tomarse la botella y salirse a divertir. And it goes like this. It's a whole lot of money. You know, we're coming together tonight to do some wonderful things in the world. Yes, I love you. I love you so much. We gotta fix a few things, don't we? That's okay. That's okay because we got a lot of, a lot of love in the room tonight, right? And we can do anything with love. But love makes miracles, trust me. I guess you could say, I don't know, I got love on the brain. <laughs> Had love on my mind lately. I don't know what it is. Do you mind if we do a couple of love songs tonight? Let's see. Do you remember this one? Drums. If you had my love and I gave you all my Your love would be untrue Would you like to be And call me baby Now if I give you me This is how it's got to be First of all I won't Take it cheating on me Tell me who can I trust If I can't trust in you And I refuse to let you Play me for a fool Yeah yeah Bang! See that's what you told me that's what you say. Think I wanna spend 
escalates All the dub you gave to the valet Knew that it was game when you looked at me Pulling up your shit so I could see the roly thing So you laid her in the corner booth Raising up a toast so I would notice you But you're hard to miss, think you ought to know Doesn't matter if you're falling out of control That you treat me You know, this is New York, and I got friends in New York. You know that? I got lots of friends in New York. I'm from New York, if you didn't know. <laughs> you don't mind if I bring some friends out? Okay. And there's no one to explain to me, you know. Okay. I know 
That's the best right there. That's the goat right there. Well, I told you. I told you I have friends. Didn't I tell you I have friends? I did. Friends, plural friends. Yeah, I'm gonna bring out some more friends. Let's go. Less room for you. Now only got you home. Come on, hug me, love me, judge me. The only man that hovers above me. Oh. Girlfriend, I got my boyfriend. Well, maybe 
say that's all I gotta say we've been fam for a long time you know I love coming to New York I love coming home and you know and you know I couldn't come home without doing this one It's always such an honor to be here with so many people, so many loving people, trying to do so many amazing things together. I love you, I see you, I see you, I see you, I see you. And because of that, tonight, tonight I want to do something special. You guys mind if I do a song that no one has heard? Because it's a special occasion. And I thought, what special thing can I do? This song is about kind of pushing through all mistakes and finding your destiny. 
This song is from Marry Me, a new film and soundtrack that I got coming out on Valentine's Day next year. So it's not out yet. But this is just for you guys here tonight. I want to share this with you because I feel, I feel what I know is that we are on our way.
the shape of you. Isn't it a paradox that the love for this world that gets us out in it sometimes leaves behind the things that can harm it? But now, flight by flight, we can make a difference. Because Delta has committed to becoming the world's first carbon neutral airline on a global basis. We believe you shouldn't have to choose between seeing the world and saving it. Please welcome Delta Airlines Managing Director of Sustainability, Amelia DeLuca, and ESG Communications Manager of Delta Airlines, Allison Ducote. Oh, I love that. One and a half degrees Celsius is what separates us from a livable planet to one that's not. We must act now to reduce emissions, and at Delta Airlines, we are rising to the challenge by defining a path to a future of net zero aviation. It's why we've been carbon neutral since March 2020, every Delta flight and destination. So know that when you book a flight with Delta, we'll offset the carbon emitted from your trip. We owe it to you, to our employees and to the communities we serve to prioritize sustainable aviation. So as the next step on this journey, we've committed to setting a science-based target aligned with climate science and join the United Nations Race to Zero Initiative, dedicated to achieving net zero carbon emissions by 2050. As part of our approach, we aim to increase our use of sustainable aviation fuel, which is made from renewable sources like cooking oil. Sustainable aviation fuel can reduce life cycle carbon intensity up to 80% compared to jet fuel. Sustainability is everybody's business. At Delta, we're driving industry change because we know we all have to work together to curb climate change. Thank you. Please welcome the president of the 76th United Nations General Assembly, Abdullah Shaheed. Dear friends, I'm so excited to be here with you this evening. I wish I could sing but you will have to settle for my remarks tonight. Don't worry, I will be very, very brief. My message is this. Do not be a cynic. Do not give up hope. Never, never doubt the ability of humankind to do the right thing when their backs are against the wall, as ours both certainly are now. I come from the Maldives, arguably one of the first countries that could be impacted by sea level rise and could disappear by the end of the century if the world does not act quickly and cohesively to combat climate change and the catastrophic effects of more than 1.5 degrees of global warming. I have placed my bet on humankind. To world leaders, I ask you to raise your climate ambition that is necessary for our silent sustainable net zero emissions, the future by taking action now to put us on a path to cut global emissions in half by 2030. And I ask the wealthy countries to deliver on their promise five years ago to provide 100, million, 100 billion every year in climate funding for developing countries. Half of this must go to adaptation. We must each own, we must each own the climate crisis. It affects us all. We can do this, but only if we do 
it together. Together. I thank you. Global citizens, please give a big New York City welcome to Billie Eilish. Are you okay? Good. Now, everyone all the way in the back, are you okay? Yes! My right side, are you good? And everybody in the middle, are you good? <laughs> all right, let's have fun. I can't seem to forget and you don't seem to notice I'm not here I'm just a mirror You check your complexion To find your reflections all
I can't even tell you. <laughs> okay, so for this next song, I'm gonna ask everybody to join me in jumping around, okay? It's not that hard. It is not that hard and nobody is too cool to jump around, okay? Even if you think you are, you're not. Um, <laughs> So there's gonna be a part of this song, there's gonna be one part where I'm gonna ask everybody out here to get as low as you can get. Bend down super, super low. And then when I tell you, we're all gonna jump around and forget all the problems in the world. <laughs> Just for one song. <laughs> you ready? <laughs> Give me that energy you've been saving up for two years, you guys. Once it's been set in motion You know I love to rub it in like lotion If you only pray on Sunday Could you come my way on Monday Cause I like to do things God does And approve of if she saw us She couldn't look away
how good were all the shows you guys just watched? Come on. <laughs> okay. Everybody, this is my brother Phineas right here. <laughs> Um, this is one of my favorite songs that we've ever written together, and it's about a lot of things that I leave up for interpretation, but I think that the underlying aspect is that we all have power and we need to try not to abuse it, right? That's basically it. <laughs> So I got two more songs and then I'm out of here. But thank you guys for being here and giving a fuck about the earth. Because it's, this is real. Like it's no joke. And you know, it really makes me hopeful 
for the world because I find myself completely hopeless most of the time about how much people don't care about the world and like where we live and it doesn't make any sense to me. And next week, the US Congress is taking a vote. It would pass the strongest climate laws in US history um, and send a strong message and example to leaders and policymakers across the world um, and put the US on a pathway to reduce domestic emissions and we need President Biden to deliver on the U.S.'s promise to help mobilize $100 billion per year in climate funding for developing countries. What the fuck? <laughs> so please check out um, globalcitizen.org to make sure your voice is heard. And let's just try, try. Let's just try about fucking helping the world and like doing what we can and Thank you guys for being here and like supporting and I am talking out my ass because I don't really know what we're supposed to do, but. <laughs> anyway, this next song is about, you know, how bad shit is. It's no joke. And since we're having fun right now, I know it's tough to think about um, how, how vital the situation is and um, but we need, to, we need to try harder, so. Turned off my mic. <laughs> you guys give me your all this song is called happier than ever when I'm away from you I'm happier than ever wish I could explain it better I wish it wasn't true Giving me a day or two to think 
think of something good to write myself a letter to tell me what to do. Oh. <gasps> 
too long, we've been taught that it means nothing. But think about it for a moment. Think about it this way. Zero COVID-19, zero hunger, zero poverty. That sure would be something. Now, imagine zero carbon emissions, the kind of emissions that send the temperatures soaring, winds howling, floods raging, fires blazing everywhere. So zero carbon would mean the world to the billions of people dealing with destruction's path. Imagine zero to all of it. And guess what? We're on it. The race to zero has begun. Just a year ago, a group of big dreamers said, what if we get everyone to commit to cut our emissions in half by 2030 and then push for zero? Who would join us? Today, 3,067 companies, 733 cities, 3,000 hospitals, 173 investors, and 622 educational institutions are in the race. Companies are already at work, adjusting supply chains, how they generate energy. They're reaching out to other CEOs, building coalitions, and joining together to defend the planet before it's too late. Today, we welcome more partners who have signed on to the most important race of our lifetime, the race to zero. And we need more to follow their lead because it's not enough. And more than 100 of the world's major carbon emitters still have not joined the fight. So are you ready to enter this race toward a healthier, fairer, cleaner, and safer world? Are you in? Because when it comes to defending this planet, zero isn't nothing. It's everything. Please welcome actor and activist, Connie Britton. Hi, you guys. Hey, y'all. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. And I know that because you are here, that means you have committed yourself to fighting for the environment. Am I right? And as a climate change advocate, hi. Hello! As a climate change advocate and as a mom, the race to zero is personal to me. But quite frankly, it needs to be personal to all of us, doesn't it? The planet, the planet is our home, y'all. We cannot afford to look the other way. We cannot afford to ignore the signs. Our home is in danger. And it's going to require all of us to save it, right? Am I right? OK. Race to Zero is the largest climate action coalition in history, but it's much more than that. It is a symbol of hope, y'all. We are in the race of our lives, not towards a finish line, but towards a new beginning. Commitment, right? Accountability, a real world solution. When we all work together, nothing is impossible. Are you with me? Yes. Love y'all, have fun. Coldplay is up. Please welcome climate justice activist and the president and CEO of the Hip Hop Caucus, Reverend Lennox Yearwood Jr. The West is on fire. My home state of Louisiana is underwater. And so was New York and New Jersey. This is code red for the planet. The climate crisis is here, and it's those in poverty, black and brown communities, and marginalized people that are bearing the brunt of its horrific effects. But we have the chance to make history soon when Congress could pass the strongest and most transformative climate legislation in American history through the Build Back Better Act. If passed, this legislation would get us to 80% pollution free electricity in America by 2030. Major incentives for solar and wind energy, electric cars and stations, funding for victims of environmental injustice and more. Without this bill, we'll only see stronger hurricanes, more fires, and more lives lost. And this legislation isn't only important to climate action to the U.S. Without it, President Biden won't have the weight needed to push other big polluting countries like India, China, and Brazil to prevent catastrophic levels of global warming. 
show Congress that this essential legislation must pass without getting watered down. Already, the polluting industries are trying to kill the bill. Download, download Global Citizen app. Take action with us. Go to globalcitizens.org slash code red and join me and others who have already spoken up to urge Congress to pass the current legislation and the Bill Back Better Act. All power to the people! Hi everyone, I'm Thomas Pesquet and I'm speaking from the International Space Station. From 250 miles above, we have a front row seat to observe the planet and it's a mind-blowing view. It really never gets old, no matter how much time you spend up here. While it's beautiful, it's also concerning to see how fragile it is. The atmosphere is so thin, like a soap bubble, and that's really all that protects us from the harshness of space and we witnessed firsthand the effects of climate change, like the increase in the frequency of these massive storms we've been seeing from up here lately. That's why it's so important to amplify as much as possible the message that Coldplay and all the artists tonight at Global Citizen Life and so many of us around the world and beyond are pushing, let's take action. There is simply no planet B and we are in this all together. Planet Earth is a giant spaceship with limited resources. We have to use them wisely and get along so that our journey continues. Chris, Guy, Johnny, Will, I know you feel the same. Please fire up Central Park with your energy. I want to hear it all the way from up here. See you on Earth. Please welcome the CEO and co-founder of Global Citizen, Hugh Evans. In 2005, when Nelson Mandela launched the campaign to make poverty history, he said that overcoming poverty is not a gesture of charity, but it's an act of justice. He said, poverty is not natural. It is man-made and can be overcome and eradicated by the actions of human beings. Charity alone, as important as it is, and it is important, will never be sufficient to end extreme poverty or tackle climate change. The actions of a movement of people is needed to drive lasting change. That's why Global Citizen is about actions. Because your voice is so much more powerful than your wallet. And right now we need your voice because there are 41 million people on the brink of starvation and $6 billion is urgently needed for the World Food Program to fight famine and the wealthy nations are ignoring it. Take action. The climate crisis endangers the planet like never before and world leaders will meet in 37 days from now. They cannot fail us. Take action. And while the COVID vaccine rate in the US and Europe is nearly 60%, the least developed nations have less than 4%. Take action. Take action, take action, take action. Take fucking action tonight. To the millions of global citizens around the world, rise up. Your passion and your advocacy matters. Let's defend the planet with climate action now. And let's get the world back on track to ending extreme poverty within our lifetime. It is now my great honor to welcome our partners in the Global Citizen Movement, Coldplay.
All right, Lang Lang, thank you so much, man. Please show us how it would sound if you did it better. Could it be? Okay. Thank you so much, Lang Lang. All right, well. Thank you, my brother. Thank you so much, everybody. We're so happy to be here. Thank you for waiting all day and all the rigmarole it takes to come to a big show like this. We're so grateful. And uh, whoever's furthest at the back, we we'll send this to you. And whoever's watching us furthest away from New York City, we send this to you too. From the band and from everybody here. One big band. Yeah. Don't try your best, but you don't succeed. Get what you want, but not what you need. When you feel so tired but you can't sleep Stuck in reverse When the tears come streaming down your face Cause you lose something you can't replace When you love someone but it goes Yes. 
so much, guys. Thank you. Okay, let's go with it. Your turn, your turn, let's go. Oh, it's so beautiful. Keep going. Thank, thank you so much. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you. Please welcome Jacob Collier and Amber in Paris from We Are King. And uh, this is a quiet song for somebody you love. Okay. Let's go. Boys, 
Boys don't cry Boys Keep it all inside I try to hide it Underneath But still my heart Starts to be My human heart Only got a human heart I wish it didn't run away I wish it didn't fall apart Oh, my human heart Night and day and light and dark Any day it could be torn in half Only got a human heart Okay, thank you so, so much. Um, we, we have, we have a, like four more songs, I think, and uh, um, it often strikes me how, how much where you're born and uh, what language you speak dictates so much of your life, and uh, we're all so lucky to be here in New York City right now, and we were lucky to be born in England and speak English, and so people listen to our music in lots of countries, and it often strikes me like, what if everything was turned upside down and we were from a place which you maybe didn't know so much about their music and someone else from that place was headlining uh, Global Citizen and stuff, or, or closing rather. And um, so here's our friend Esther, she's from Zambia. And uh, in Zambia she's like Beyonce. And so for this song, please welcome Esther as if you were welcoming Beyonce. That's what I'd like you to do. Because, really, in, in my dream planet, we'd welcome everybody like they were Beyonce. <laughs> so, okay, so this, to paraphrase Marty McFly from Back to the Future, this is a giant hit where Esther comes from. This is a song called Jehovah, and uh, please treat it like a giant hit where we come from too, okay?
Thank you, Amber. Thank you, Jacob. Uh, somehow we still have more guests. I don't know how this has happened, but we, we, uh, our friend Ken said, hey, would you maybe have one person join you on stage? And we realized that we sort of have about 150 people um, in this set. So thank you for being patient with our uh, collaborations and love of so many different kinds of music. And, but um, this one, <clears throat> it's an old, old song, and, and we, um, first time we came to New York was to mix this song, and, and this is the song that kept bringing us back. Um, so, this is called Yellow, and uh, halfway, halfway through, we're going to show how good it could have been, okay? Look at the stars, how they shine for me. things you do Yeah, they were all yellow I came along I wrote a song for you And everything you do And it was called yellow So then I took my Camilla, thank you.
Okay, well, thank you so much, Sean. Thank you, Camille. Okay, let's go. This is our first song, half in Korean. And we collaborated with a band. And we took their average age up about 15 years but it's been one of the most fun things we've ever done. This is a song we did with BTS. This is about love for you, love, and, and only that. I'm crazy, child. I'm so, 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 
much, everybody. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you for giving us our job back. Well, we're basically at the end of the show nearly. And uh, normally we would play a really long, slow, boring Coldplay song right now. And uh, we were like, man, there's 70,000 people who've waited all day. Can't we give them something super, super special that who knows how many times you'll be able to see this person again. He doesn't play so much, but uh, he's one of our absolute dream heroes. And he defines New York, he defines music, really. He, he taught most of us in England about African music as well. And uh, he was supposed to play here a, a month or so ago, and uh, the rain said no. So we feel it's our, our, our duty to say thank you for watching us and thank you for watching Billy and Sean and everybody and Lizzo and thank you for Global Citizen putting us on thank you for all the actions you've taken to get your tickets and all the actions around the world to tell people you care about the earth and each other so please welcome from the pantheon of the greatest 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 of the great Mr. Paul Simon Such a promise All lies and jest Still a man hears what he wants to hear Disregards the rest When I left my home and my family No more than a boy company of strangers in the quiet of the railway station running scared laying low seeking out the poor quarters where the ragged people go looking for the places only they would know sing la 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 Asking only workmen's wages I come looking for a job I get no offers Just to come on from the whores on 7th Avenue I do declare There were times when I was so lonesome I took some comfort there Ooh, la, 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 la.
I'm laying out my winter clothes Wishing I was gone, going home Where the New York City winters are leaving me Leaving me In the clearing stands a boxer, a fighter by his trade, and he carries the reminders of every glove that laid him down or cut him till they cried out in his anger and his shame. I'm leaving, I'm leaving, but the fighter still remains, he still remains. Thank you so much. There's a one minute film that I'd like you to see very much. Uh, I think you'll understand why. And, uh, and I'll be back in a second as soon as, as soon as the film is completed. Half Earth aims to solve a problem what E.O. Wilson calls the next big thing, the thing we need to turn our attention to beyond the changing climate, and that is the loss of the very fabric of our planet, the loss of biodiversity. In May 2019, the United Nations issued an apocalyptic report about mass extinction. The report warned that one million plant and animal species were at risk of extinction. Of course, when this story hit the page, it mattered because somewhere in the core of our humanity, we recognize these creatures, great and small. And when we're touched by their story, we feel extraordinary compassion. When E.O. Wilson conceived of Half Earth, he imagined that we would bring together our scholarship and understanding from many walks of life to work together to achieve a grand goal, that we would work together to save our planet and in turn, bring out the best of ourselves. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce a very dear friend of mine and a man I greatly admire. This is E.O. Wilson, Ed Wilson. Thank you. And I find this magnificent audience overwhelming. So 
No. <laughs> Thank Is you. that mic working? Can you hear? Was... Can you hear him? Thank you for having me. <laughs> Tell him what's on your mind, Dan. Okay. Uh, this is a group that is, I would be happy to address if there were just one of you. Uh, it's, a, it's a great experience. Thank you for having me. The first time I heard Ed Wilson speak, he said something that really struck me, which was, that we have the potential to make this planet a paradise by the next century. And I believe, and he believes, that we still have that potential. We know it's going to be hard work, but that's where we're headed. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. E.O. Wilson, ladies and gentlemen. darkness, my old friend, I've come to talk with you again, because a vision softly creeping, left its seeds while I was sleeping, and the vision that was planted in my brain. Still remains within the sound of silence. And rest the streams I walked along, narrow streets of cobblestone, neath the halo. Talking without speaking, people hearing without listening, people writing songs that voices never share, and no one dare to 
disturb the sound of silence. Fool, said I, you do not know. Silence like a cancer grows. Hear my words that I might teach you. Take my arms and I might reach out to you. But my words, like silent raindrops, fell. And echo in the wells of silence. And the people bowed and prayed to the neon god they made. And the sign flashed its warning, and the words that it was forming said, The words of the prophets are written on the subway wall. And the tenement halls and whispered in the sound.